Hi guys, I'm EVM, welcome back. Now, I want to talk about FEVs in this one, or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. The vast majority of people I talk to that own one always come back and say, I don't get the MPG that the manufacturer says I should. Now, I know there's many, many variables and it's not a clear-cut, black-and-white situation, but for me, ultimately, it's because most people, not everyone, most people don't use it properly. They don't utilise the plug-in hybridness that they've got at their disposal. A lot of them don't even plug it in. Uh, so that's what this video is about, basically. I've got hold of a FEV. I've got a typical daily commute for me, which is about, I think it's about 40 miles. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's above the range of the battery. So I'm effectively going to show you what you should do, or what you can do, to uh, get the most out of your car, basically. If you own a FEV, you will get, hopefully, the MPG that the manufacturer states you should get. Now, don't get me wrong, it's pretty simple and straightforward is this. It's not hypermiling or anything boring like that. It's just pressing a few buttons, telling the car what, what to do and when, and ultimately getting high MPG, which is ultimately what the FEV is about. If you've got a FEV and you do lots and lots of motorway miles, it's not the right car for you. But ultimately, if you've got a FEV and you do want to get the most out of it, i.e. it's not a company car, then uh, that's what this is for. So, uh, yeah, and uh, enjoy it. <clears throat> Okay, now my commute today is probably going to be about 40 odd miles. I really should have looked it up before I set off. But uh, I've got a good commute. I've got a commute that is above the range of the car. That was the whole point of doing it today. Normally, I wouldn't have done it literally the day after this car was dropped off because this is the first time I've driven it. I'm unfamiliar with the car completely and I uh, couldn't set up the preconditioning for the cabin heater either. And those are things which are very, very good to do when you want to basically eke out the best M MPG you can. Preconditioning in the cabin, if, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, basically means that you turn the heater on or you schedule the heater to come on before you set off. So you get into a nice toasty warm car, which is good for the driver, but it's also good for the battery because a lot of energy is used to, to heat a car up, far less than, uh, than maintaining that temperature. So if I tell this car to preheat before I set off whilst it's still plugged into my house, then the majority of that energy will come from the house because the car will pump out heat, it will use a bit of the energy from the battery because obviously the, the engine's not running because you're not in the car. So you're effectively using your house's energy to heat the cabin up. And then all the car has to do when you get inside is maintain the temperature. Now, because I know that the commute I'm doing today, the journeys, because I'll be doing several, um, will be a lot more than the range of the car. I reckon I'm doing on 40 odd miles. It's hard to know because I'll be going to a few unknown places that I haven't received yet. So I'll be doing, let's say I'm doing 40 odd miles. The car says it's got 27 miles of range. Uh, so I want to, to an extent, I don't want to be really anal with this. We're not hypermiling, as I said. We're not trying to drive really economically. What I want to do is pick my battles, as it were, and choose when I want the car to run on full electric. You can leave the car in, you know, in, in its eco mode and let it choose. But sometimes it, it, it doesn't know what we know, does it? It can't predict, or oh, you're about to come into traffic. So what I tend to do is effectively, as I have already, set off in full electric mode. It's the first thing I do when I got in the car, put it in full electric mode. That way I'm driving and I'm not using anything yet. When I get to what would be an efficient road, like, a, I don't know, sweeping country roads where you're not going to be stopping, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the normal, uh, I'll let the car decide effectively, I'll put it in hybrid mode rather than full electric mode. Right now I'm going through this village and I'm stuck in stop-start traffic. I absolutely want this to be in full electric mode, which the car would probably pick for me, but I want to make sure that happens. So, I'm in full electric mode in traffic. When I get onto the uh, dual carriageway, in a couple of minutes, I will be putting it back into full hybrid mode and letting the car do whatever it wants to do in terms of engaging the engine or not, because I know I cannot do this entire journey on full electric, so therefore I have to use some petrol. Clearly, if you're doing a, I don't know, 15 mile round trip today, then you put it in full electric when you set off 
and leave it that way because you've got more range in your battery than you're going on. You, you, know, you, you will not use a drop of fuel. It really is kind of basic, isn't it, if you think about it. Electric is extremely cheap. It's about a tenth of the cost to me when I charge at home. And that's a big thing, if you can charge at home. This video is clearly aimed at those who have bought a plug-in hybrid and can charge it. So if you could charge at home, using electric as much as possible is key to this entire test, to this entire video. The whole point of it is to use as much electric as possible. If you want to make it really simple, might not be the most efficient thing to do, put it in full electric mode every morning, use the whole battery as much as you can, and then if you go above your range of your car, it will just end up kicking the petrol engine in. But at least you've used the full battery. Arriving home with half a battery is ridiculous because you've burnt fuel for no reason. So that's the whole point of this exercise. So I'm about to go back on the bypass now. So I've put the car back into hybrid mode because I want to control what the car does because I know what I'm doing today, the car doesn't. Quite a few people will be watching this going, well, duh. Yeah, kind of figure that one out. Use electric as much as possible. That's not difficult to, to, to know, but as I said earlier, so many people have a FEV that I've spoken to online or in person and don't even plug it in. <laughs> That's the first lesson, isn't it? Plug the car in. It's a plug-in hybrid. If you don't plug it in, it's just a petrol car. I know we're gonna get a lot of people who say, well, I got given one as a company car. I don't pay my fuel. I can't give a monkeys. Well, we, I can't help that. This is aimed at people who actually care about how much they, they pay on fuel and how much um, miles per gallon they're getting. So this is all about miles per gallon. If you don't care about that, then it doesn't really matter, does it, I suppose? Right now, I'm coming up to a roundabout after the end of this dual carriageway. So I'm putting energy back in the battery. I'm using regenerative braking. Now, most people by now will probably be familiar with at least what it is. But if you're not, effectively, that means that rather than in a traditional uh, non-hybrid or electric car, you would have brakes that basically turn that forward momentum, that kinetic energy into heat by the brake disc doing that on the pad. It basically slows you down with friction. With regenerative braking, which is a word I sometimes can't say, it seems, what happens then is that the, the electric motor effectively turns into a generator. Think of it like a, a generator on a wind turbine. So the car's momentum will turn that generator and turn it into electricity. So you're getting fuel back in the car every time you slow down. So this is why hybrids are a lot more efficient than just a petrol only car, because it's got that recuperation, which a traditional car will obviously cannot ever possibly have. I should point out that you'll always use a lot more energy getting to speed then it will recuperate. So right now, I'm back in, stuck in traffic, full electric mode, thank you very much. Now the car probably would have been in full electric mode at this speed anyway, but I want to make sure it is by doing it myself. About to enter another dual carriageway, so back into hybrid mode. As I said, you don't really have to do this if you can't be bothered doing it every single time. You know, it might get a little boring, but that's what this exercise is about. So far my consumption is 86.7 miles per gallon. I've got 24 miles of range left and I have done eight miles of the journey. I should point out that some plug-in hybrids will, uh, if you use a sat-nav, will predict where it should use it and where it shouldn't. So this will, you know, the car will effectively do what I'm just telling you to do. But what the car won't know, even if I use a sat-nav, is that I'm doing multiple trips for work today. I'm not just going to work and then driving back. So, uh, yeah, only a person sometimes can really truly figure out what's best. As soon as I come off this dual carriageway, I'm pretty much on normal uh, 30 mile roads for the rest of the journey. So full electric after that, that's the point. So right now I'm on the dual carriageway. I'm doing the speed limit, which is 50 right now and the engine is driving me forward according to the car that has decided that that's the most efficient use of my uh, fuel i'm just sat here at 50 not accelerating or anything like that um so rather than deplete the battery on this road that the petrol engine can run efficiently on 
I'm going to save it for the uh, for the slower bits. Now, when it comes to miles per gallon and things like this, you have to pick the right car. A plug-in hybrid is brilliant for normal day-to-day -day driving, for commuting, for picking the kids up from school, from going to the shops, from what traditionally the majority of journeys probably are. There's someone that lives very near me who's got a plug-in hybrid, and they've fully admitted they barely plug it in, even though they do have a charger, and uh, they just get in and drive. They never fiddle with any of the settings. They might put it in Eco or Sport or something like that, but they'll never force it in full electric mode. So the amount of times they'll go to the shops and back and use some petrol, because obviously the car will do its own thing to a point, is just basically wasting money. As a Yorkshireman, I find that perplexing. I really do. I admit it's not the most exciting video I've ever done. How to get more miles per gallon. Yeah. There's real morons around, isn't there? I'm doing the school run, I'm going to park there, and I don't care, because I've got to drop little Johnny off. Right, I'm here at my first place. Let's see what I've got. So I did 17 miles on this particular leg, and so far I'm on 131 miles per gallon. Obviously, uh, I've used some battery on that one. I've got 18 miles of range left on the battery, which in a percentage term is... Still not familiar with this car. Here we go. I've got 61% left. 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Right, well, uh, better get some work done, I suppose. Oh, the car has just turned the engine on. I have got 1% left on the battery. Basically, I've, I've used all the battery. I'm probably about, because I haven't gone the way that the sat-nav suggested, uh, I don't know, four or five miles, oh, hello, four or five miles away um, over country roads. So I think the fact that I've, I've been going uphill a lot has probably depleted a lot of it there. Um, so yeah, I've got a bit of downhill action coming on now. Uh, battery's up to 3% already. So I think uh, once I get to the top, of, uh, of the, the moors, if you like. It's all downhill to my house from that point. I should be able to uh, go back into full EV mode. We'll just have to see. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, the engine's kicking in now. I'm using fuel. No, it's ruining my MPG. And it feels strange because my foot has a slight vibration to it now because the, you know, the petrol engine is there and it hasn't been there for the past 45 minutes-ish. What can I do for you? Mm, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. What? Sorry, spelling is not supported. Hey? Okay, I am home. And that, that, that climb over the moors. The engine kicked in, I could see my miles per gallon plummet. If I'd have just left on 100% battery instead of 92%, I bet I'd have got to the top of that hill or almost to it. Uh, okay, I have done 39 miles today. Uh, two hours 27. It's taken me to do 39 miles. See there, 39 miles for current journey, 155 miles per gallon. That's just tripped down from 4.9 to 5 miles per kilowatt hour in terms of electric consumption. So what have we learned from this little jaunt? Well, by utilising the battery, in fact, what, what did I have? I've got 4% battery left and that's only because the last bit to my house was downhill. I've used all electric, and as I said, if I'd just had a full charge, oh, I could. I reckon I'd have got close to 200 miles per gallon. But I don't think 155 miles per gallon is bad. For a, it's a Skoda Superb, so it's a big car. Um, and yeah, all I've changed is effectively making sure I've used all the electric. So what I want you to take away from this particular video, if you have a FEV and you're not using it properly anyway, obviously plug it in. For the love of God, plug it in. Uh, presumably you got a plug-in hybrid because of that uh, company car aside. Um, and use your electricity, all of it, on each journey. Right, okay, thanks for watching guys. Uh, subscribe if you like this video. In fact, just subscribe anyway, even if you didn't like it because uh, that's the only thing manufacturers pay attention to. And I'll get more cars like this, hopefully. So, uh, yes, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.